Okay. Okay, so this is the board after deployment. Talk us through what you got, Dan, on what would be your right flank. Okay, so this is the Brotherhood. We have a regiment of the Brotherhood here with uh, the potion of the Caterpillar, which gives them Pathfinder. This guy is my Exemplar Forsaker, actually with my general sitting on him this time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's actually there now. Let's just, can we just like see how nice these knights are? Man, that's sweet. Okay, carry on. And Again, in, in coming into your middle. Still not completed, finished painted, but anyway, we've got a troop of martyrs, standard as they come. Regiment of Order of the Brotherhood on foot, standard as they come. Horde of martyrs. Uh, here, then, we have Order of the Forsaken, just a regiment. And then they also have Quicksilver Reaper as well. Okay. And uh, a horde of the same Forsaken, which they have Brewer's Strength. Over here, troop of the Villain Reconiters. They have Sparkstone. And then this guy, who's my Forsaken Beast. <laughs> the Bear. The Bear. <laughs> he has a snare. The Bear. <laughs> And then we've got a uh, regiment, another regiment of the Brotherhood. It's just standard as they come. And then this guy is my exemplar hunter, and he has got the uh, wings of the honey maze. And he's actually meant to be on foot, but he's kindly let Joe's kindly let me <laughs> use him on a horse. Okay. Uh, other, I just to mention that he also has healing brew, which I forgot earlier. Okay. So just the four flyers then, yeah? Just, just, just the four. Just the four. Okay, right. Uh, let's have a look what the goblins have brought today. Let's start on what is the goblin right flank. Two regiments of more beast packs. Uh, behind them, we've got a whiz. This guy has got uh, Bane Chant and um, Inspiring Talisman, so he is actually inspiring. And we've got a giant. Then let's come over into the centre. We've got some buildings that are blocked terrain. That is a war trombone. And next to the war trombone is a troll. This troll is actually a war trombone. I don't, <laughs> I don't have three war trombone models, but I wanted to field three of them today. So he is kindly proxy in. Uh, then we've got a horde of trolls next. And then we've got another horde of trolls. We've got a giant. And then just behind the giant is a flagget with loot for Bane Chant. Next we've got a horde of sharp sticks. Uh, next to them we've got the woods here. I don't know whether you can see in the woods. Let's move this tree. We've got another war trombone. Then we've got a goblin whiz. He's got the um, amulet which gives him a lightning bolt 5. And then on this flank we've got right here a uh, regiment of flea bag riders with Helm of the Ram that gives them the uh, upgrade for Thunderous 2. And then going on here, uh, you're going to have to use your imagination again, guys. These are Gore Riders, not more axes or anything like that. I accidentally left my Gore Riders at home, so I'm, I brought the wrong stuff. So uh, these are actually, the base size is exactly the same, so these guys are actually a, an Orc Cavalry Regiment allied in. And then behind them, Again, left my stuff at home. This. Sorry, where was I? This guy's actually Tin Traitor, so he is an orc crudger on a boar. <laughs> Hope that doesn't get too confusing. Yeah. Um, so, the game scenario is dominate, and there is the center of the board. And this is what the board looks like. So, we haven't rolled for the first turn yet. So we're going to roll for the first turn. And okay, guys, and welcome to another battle report. Um, before we start, this is just to say this is actually a rematch of a game that was played last week between the Goblins and the Brotherhood. Um, the lists aren't identical, a few tinkers have been made, but uh, it was a really good game and I uploaded the battle report last week, so uh, if you enjoyed this one, um, check that one out after the game. And the scenario for this one is Dominate, you can see the uh, marker in the middle of the board. Um, I don't know, my, I think my thoughts going into this are really... I'm just going to play a kill scenario, and then when it comes to turn like five or six, just like run to the center. <laughs> I think that's the plan anyway. So the Brotherhood won the uh, roll to go first, and as you can see, they've made a general advance up the board. The um, 
the troop of the uh, flying forsaken they were behind the uh, massive horde of martyrs in the middle and they've just gone up and over them and kind of filled that space in uh, in between the two buildings there and you can't see it because the um the exemplar hunter has wings of the honey maze and he has flown right up over and is now tucked behind that building so the brotherhood have already taken the first turn and advanced generally at the board so i'm yet to take a turn um and here are my uh, here are my thoughts and feelings going into this game of tactics and what's going through my head um i'm really worried frankly I think that's a really tough army to play against. He's got three units of cavalry and four flyers. And uh, that's just so much mobility and so much cavalry. Uh, I, just, I don't know how I'm going to deal with it. And I know that that horde of Forsaken Knights with the Brew of Strength as well. Um, yes, that unit is a lot of points. But they are, they're they're going to blow through anything they hit. That is seriously tough. And they're flying. Oh, I, d I don't know how I'm going to deal with that. I was genuinely worried going into this game. I looked at deployment and thought, I just I don't know how I'm going to win. My uh, my plan was to um, win, kind of like hold up in the middle uh, with my troll hordes, and then try and win that left flank, and then see if my right flank will hold. I don't have a lot of faith in those two regiments of Morby's packs because they're defence three. They are only 95 points apiece, but um, I, I think he's got the movement advantage on that right-hand side, so I think I've lost that one. So I've got to win the centre and I've got to win the left. And hopefully, just hope my war trombones are effective against his, um, against his flyers. And that is kind of like my tactics. That's how I hope to win the game. So uh, let's see how it pans out anyway. Oh, and it's also worth noting that this Brotherhood list um, doesn't have any shooting. It's literally got zero range capability. Um, so I've got that in mind when I'm deploying, so I just deploy my war trombones, like two of them in the middle, just totally out in the open. It means I can also deploy my Morbis packs on the right-hand side again out in the open, and I don't have to worry about them getting like picked off at all. Um, so that is, that is one thing I do have working in my favour going into this game. And here's just a quick view of the uh, Exemplar uh, Hunter the with Wings of the Honey Maze. You can see him just tucked behind that building just there. So Goblin turn 1, and here's what it's looking like on the left flank after the movement phase. As you can see, those flea bag riders have raced up the flank and have nimble pivoted 90 degrees straight away. Now... Uh, you can't tell from the photo, but those guys are actually out of line of sight from the Brotherhood Knights, so that's a massive bonus. Um, the Sharp Stick unit on the on the right, the Horde of Sharp Sticks, they've moved up. The Wizard and the War Trombone in the woods have moved up, and they are just in range to get some shooting off. And then the, uh, the Gore Riders, the Orcs, they've just moved up there as well. Now, what I've done with the Orc Crudger is I've moved him up and parked him an inch away from the front of that Brotherhood uh, Knights unit. Um, my thoughts there is I want I want to win this flank, right? So I'm prepared to suicide him in order to guarantee the collapse onto that Knights unit and then win this flank and then get over into the middle. That is my thinking. I'm not sure whether it's the right thing to do, but that was my idea at the time. And here's what the middle of the board is looking like. As you can see, the giant has moved up and just pivoted towards the center. The two troll hordes have moved up. Um, the way it works out here is that the troll hordes are sitting so that they can charge. They're within 12, but they can't be charged because obviously the Brotherhood's uh, infantry has a range of 10. So they're sitting something like 11 inches away here. And so what I've done is is I've, I've put the ball in the Brotherhood's court, as you will. So he has to act next turn. Um, otherwise, he's just going to get charged. The War Trombones, are, they've just come up the right-hand side. There's not any great targets for them. Um... Although, as you'll see in the shooting phase, I do draw a line of sight to something. And then the flag get as um, he's just come up the uh, behind the trolls just to support with his uh, inspiring. Now, I am actually in charge range of both his flyers here. Obviously, they've got a huge range. It's 20 inches, so I know I'm in range here. But my thoughts are, 
I don't anticipate his flyers charging my trolls because I think if he does, they're gonna he's gonna leave them quite exposed, and I will be able to get counter charges off with the giant. That's why I've pivoted the giant over. Um, so that's what I think he's gonna do in his next turn. And here's the right hand flank. So I've moved up with the giant. I'm okay moving up with the giant. I n I know he can take a charge. Um, that's what giants are built for. They can absorb some serious wounds. But what I've done is I've moved backwards with the two Morbius packs. They were in charge range of all that cavalry, um, and they, they can't take a charge. They're going to crumble to anything. So what I've done is I've just moved the giant up, saying, "Okay, you can charge a giant if you want," and then I will counter charge you with my Morbius packs. If I move my Morbius packs up here, they're just going to get charged. They're going to get annihilated, and then my flank is just going to crumble. So that's that's a dumb thing to do. So I move them back, and then keep the giant in charge range. So I'm again, I'm kind of saying like the balls in your court. What are you going to do? Well, that's my thoughts here. So in the shooting phase, um, the Troll Bruiser, who is proxy and is a water on bone, don't forget, he can actually draw line of sight to that uh, Forsaken, with, uh, the Forsaken Hero with Wings of the Honey Maze, barely just clipping his base. Um, uh, he opens up on him and does four wounds and wavers him. That's a very good start. Um, an individual flying is just a pain because they got 360 view and I didn't know what this guy was going to do. So... A wavering him is a, oh, I'm chuffed with that I really am and then on the uh, left hand flank you see the um, the goblin uh, with lightning bolt 5 who was in the woods and the war trombone who's in the woods they both moved up and they opened up on the exemplar uh, hero on the griffin and between them both they put three wounds on him and it's not enough to weigh the him uh, I'm a little bit disappointed with that I was hoping for more than three wounds but hey three is a good start And Brotherhood turn two, and some charges have been declared. Uh, obviously, the uh, Brotherhood Knights have to charge into that Orc Crudger. Uh, let's see how he gets on. <laughs> and then the uh, Exemplar Forsaker on the Griffin, he has charged right over and gone into that War Trombone in the woods. Uh, interesting decision, that. I wasn't expecting that at all, I'm going to be honest. So that quite surprised me. And in the centre, again... Uh, both these flying, the horde of uh, Forsaken have flown over and charged into that uh, troll horde on the right. And then the uh, Forsaken troop have charged into one of the water and bones. Um, now that was, a, that was a narrow corridor between those two buildings and it was it could barely fit. So that was a close one. Um, again, wasn't expecting that. I, I knew I was in range of those flyers, but I didn't think he'd actually just, just advance his whole lineup and then charge his flyers over. So, uh, yeah, I'm a little bit worried there. Let's see, uh, let's see what happens in that combat. But on the right-hand side, it's a very different story, a very conservative effort from the, uh, the Brotherhood here, electing to do no charges, not even on the Giant, so everything moves up and is in range for the charge next turn. Um, and the uh, the Reconnectors, the cavalry there, they've got the uh, magic item Sparkstone, so they cast Sparkstone on my Goblin Wiz, and he is now disordered, so he won't be... He won't be bane chanting anything next turn, which is very annoying. So moving on to the combat for the Brotherhood, and it's really not a good start. That regiment of Brotherhood knights charge the uh, the Sloan Orc Crudger on a boar, and look at those dice, man! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They had sixteen attacks to get ten hits and only two wounds, wounding on threes. Oh man, and guess what? Toons on him. He's got inspiring, obviously. They waver him. But he's an orc, so he's got fury, so he doesn't even care. Fair play to him. He's just taken a full frontal cavalry charge to the face and shrugged it off like a boss. <laughs> what a legend. I think I've got away with it there. Uh, I've had a bit of a touch. Uh <laughs> The uh, exemplar on the griffin, though, is a bit of a different story here. Despite being hindered by flying into the woods, um, manages to put three wounds on that war trombone, and there's no inspiring around, and it is gone. Absolutely routed in a one. And here's the combat in the middle of the board. Uh, that horde of Forsaken Knights put 14 wounds onto that troll horde, uh, and needless to say, routed it despite inspiring. 
Wow, I mean, I knew these guys hit hard. I didn't know they hit that hard. 20 attacks, hitting on threes, wounding on twos, because they've got crushing as well as thunderous two. Ouch, that hurts. So that's a troll horde down straight away. And that forsaken, um, the troop of forsaken knights who flew into the war trombone. This is, uh, well, this is a bit unfortunate, actually. He puts three wounds on the war trombone and then fluffs the nerve roll. But we didn't realise until the next turn that what uh, what my opponent did here is he forgot to triple his attacks against the war trombone. And uh, I was too busy laughing to myself that he couldn't route a war trombone in a one and both of us just forgot that he was supposed to triple his attacks. Um, so that's a bit unfortunate. Um, hopefully it doesn't have too much of an impact on the game. I don't, I don't think it will. But uh, yeah, that you know, it's just one of those things. So that's the uh, end of the Brotherhood turn two, and here's a, a more of an overview of the left hand side. You can see that that example of Forsaker, uh, after routing the War Trombone, he um, he gets he decides to move forward, and he rolls a six, so he goes forward right over into the woods, and. Um, yeah, I don't know what to do about that going into my next turn because it's turn two and I've already got a flying hero directly behind my lines and I've got a troll horde routed in the middle. Um, I'm a bit worried, I'm going to be honest. And if I bring up the uh, previous picture of what the middle of the board's looking like, you can see we're playing dominate scenario. You need to get units into the center of the board and he's got that horde of martyrs who are like fearless 20 odd. Um, and then another regiment of Brotherhood, and then a horde of flyers, a troop of flyers, and a troop of martyrs who again are fearless, all parked in the middle of the board. And I'm just thinking to myself, going into turn two, I, I don't know how I'm going to deal with that. I don't know how I've got enough to get rid of those units and open up the center. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, this game's not looking good for the Goblins at this point. I don't really know what to do. Let's see if I can pull anything out of my ass going into turn three. Okay, so we start Goblin turn two, and this is the left flank, and obviously the flea bag riders have gone into the flank of the uh, Brotherhood Knights. The Orc Gore Riders have gone into the front, and that legend of a uh, Orc Crudger hero has charged right back in their front. Uh, this is probably a bit of an overkill, but um, you know I can reform after this combat anyway. Those Knights are toast. There's no way they're sticking around. And here's the state of the board in the middle. So the sharp sticks are, are starting from left to right. The sharp sticks have charged into the front of the martyr troop. The giant has elected to go into the uh, brotherhood on foot. And the trolls have charged the front of the uh, the horde of Forsaken. The two war trombones on the right hand side. Um, obviously one of them is disordered so can't shoot. But um, they just back up a little bit and prepare to unload on the uh, Forsaken or the smaller unit of Forsaken in the shooting phase. Uh, I'm quite lucky here in that the martyrs, the, the massive horde of martyrs, obviously with that huge base size and being a horde, um, they're really penned in. So uh, I, I, there's no really viable counter charges going, so I can get off all these charges and, and be okay, I think. And this is the board on the right hand flank after movement. The giant has charged up into the uh, recognized cavalry. The uh, war beast pack, the more beast pack, sorry, have charged into the um, forsaken beast, um, and the other more beast pack. They've just moved up and pivoted. They weren't in range. The other more beast pack. I had a bit of a choice of charges here. Um, I was torn between putting the more beast pack into the unit of cavalry as well, um, and guaranteeing that win, and then reforming, but. Uh, I was a bit greedy. I put them into the uh, Forsaken Knight because I anticipate the Giant to, to blow through that cavalry in one go, hopefully. Um, frustratingly, I can't Bane Chant the Morbius pack with a Wiz. Uh, that would have been a real help, but he's disordered, unfortunately. So, uh, in the shooting phase, the uh, War Trombone in the center unloads onto the uh, Forsaken Troop and puts three wounds on them. Obviously, the other one is disordered. Uh, it's not enough to waver them or rout them, but a three is a pretty good start. But the real hero is the Goblin Wizard on the left here, and he was in the woods, if you can remember. He turns around and, with Lightning Bolt 5, puts two wounds on the Forsaken Exemplar and wavers him. Now nah, this is brilliant news because uh, he's right behind my line, so that stops him from like doing and like whipping around the board with his massive fly movement next turn. So that's a real help. I needed that. 
So it's on to the combat phase, and here's the left flank, and that Order of the Brotherhood Regiment, yeah, they're routed, no surprises there, they took a cavalry charge to the front and to the side, they were never going to hold up, uh, I think something like 20 wounds, and yeah, they're popped, and luckily because that um, Exemplar Forsaker on the Griffin um, has charged forward and then been wavered in the forest, um, then I'm pretty much free to regroup these units and just face towards the centre of the board. And here's what the centre of the board looks like after combat. Now, the trolls, after being bane chanted by the whiz um, in the centre there with uh, loot and insatiable darkness, they go to town on the Horde of Forsaken and they put 11 wounds on them. 18 attacks, hitting on 4s, wounding on 2s, thanks to that cheeky little bane chant. And the <laughs> Horde, Horde of Forsaken is routed that, that I am absolutely chuffed with this. Um, that's pretty good rolling. 11 wounds. And they were unfortunately out of inspiring range because there's the um, there's their inspiring just sitting at the back of that unit of Brotherhood on foot. And it was too far. It was more than 6 inches away and they were gone. So that that's huge. Yep, really needed that. The trolls reform and uh, they are about to get charged but still... That unit's gone, and I'm chuffed with that. So the sharp sticks, in the meantime, went into the um, the little troop of martyrs, and they did five wounds, which is pretty decent for those guys. But unfortunately, it wasn't enough to uh, waver them or break them. And the giant, um, he didn't do as good. He put four wounds on the Brotherhood on foot, and again, not enough to break or waver them. So that's what the center of the board's looking like. And over on the right hand flank, the giant doesn't do too well. He puts four wounds on the unit of Reckoniters, which uh, isn't enough to um, isn't enough to bait them. So he just bounces back. That's a little disappointing. I expected him to smash through those, but unfortunately not. But um, on the other hand, the unit of uh, sorry, the Morbius packs that went into the Forsaken Beast, despite him having an ensnare, meaning they were hitting him on fours instead of threes, and them not getting Bane Chant, they put five wounds on him and waver him. Now that's just really good rolling and again a bit of luck for me. So this flank is actually turning out a lot better than I thought it would. Okay, so here's just an overview of the board after Brotherhood have made their turn. And as you can see on the right hand side, the uh, Order of Brotherhood Knights have gone into the front of that Morbius pack. Um, the Forsaken Beast, although he's wavered, he can still move backwards slightly, so that's what he does. He just nudges back. The Reckoners have gone into the front of the Giant there, and although you can't see behind the building, the um, hero with wings of the Honey Maze, um, he's not wavered anymore, obviously, so he decides to go into the flank of the Giant. The Order of Forsaken have gone back into that Water on Bone in the middle, and the Horde of Martyrs have gone into the front of the horde of trolls they've also been bane chanted by the uh, by the loot there with the um flag bearer i forget his name so they've got bane chanted a lot of attacks they've got potential to do some damage the um brotherhood on foot have gone into the knights and the troop of martyrs have gone into the gone into the sharp sticks just basically all counter charges so that's what the board is looking like for the brotherhood oh yeah and off on the left um, the Exemplar Forsaker, um, who was wavered in the forest, fails his headstrong roll and won't be doing anything this turn. So after combat then, the uh, horde of, uh, sorry, the troop of martyrs against the sharp sticks weren't able to put a single wound on the sharp sticks, which is pretty good for the goblins, and the giant only took one from the Brotherhood on foot. So some really ineffective combat there from the Brotherhood, but... The Martyrs actually did really well. After that cheeky Bane chant from Loot, uh, they put seven wounds on the Trolls and wavered the Trolls. So that's pretty good for the Brotherhood there. Uh, no surprises, Trolls getting wavered again. And the Order of Forsaken put three wounds onto uh, the Troll Bruiser, Proxians of Water on Bone, and puts them up to six and they rout him. And uh, yeah, this is actually the point where um, my opponent realized that he'd forgot to triple his attacks last turn. Um, so, yeah, it's unfortunate again, but, you know, what can you do? The uh, Order of Brotherhood Cavalry, though, on the right-hand side, have 16 attacks and do 12 wounds to the Morby's pack. 12! Ouch, that hurts. Uh, needless to say, despite their inspiring, they rout them. And the Order of Brotherhood Knights, they uh, reform to face towards the centre. 
but the uh, other combats don't go as well. Uh, as you can see, the Reckonite is going into the front, and then that uh, Forsaken Hunter, he was wavered last turn, but this is the flank. He puts a flank charge into the Giant, and between them, they only do three wounds. Obviously, that um, Exemplar Hunter, he's an individual, so he doesn't get double his attacks in the flank, and the Toughness 5 Giant just soaks up three wounds and is not even bothered. So here's more of an overview of the board after the end of Brotherhood turn 3 and not a very successful turn really for the Brotherhood. In terms of casualties all they managed to secure was one uh, Morbius Pack Regiment and one War Trombone and both of those together amassed to uh, 160 points which is not a lot of points but they have wavered a Troll Horde in the centre of the board so that's pretty good going. Um, let's see how the Goblins can do when we move on to Goblins turn 3. So, lots of charges to declare here for the goblins. As you can see, the entire left flank has now come into the centre. The uh, the orcs have just moved to the top because um, I couldn't get everything in, so it was just way too tight. So I decided to put them over to the top and they'll be ready um, to get to the centre of the board to secure objectives and look at taking other things. The flea bag riders, now they've gone into the flank of the Brotherhood on foot. Um, the... Orc Crudger on a boar, he's gone into the flank of the Martyrs. The Sharp Six have countercharged back into the front of the Martyrs. Now, the Giant, he's performed a flank charge on the Horde of Martyrs. Because my thinking there is the flea bags can flank them, they should be able to finish them off. They get double attacks. And they've all, uh, those Brotherhood on foot have already got four wounds. So I don't think the Giant charging in the front there is um, is necessary. But if you have a look, the the base of the Martyr Horde is deep enough that the Giant could draw line of sight. It was in his front arc. And obviously he's height 4 and they're height 1 so he can he has line of sight and you can make one pivot on a charge. So he can make a 90 degree pivot and then flank charge the Horde of Mars. That is a perfectly legal charge. Now the Trolls, I was kind of stuck between two minds here. Obviously they're weathered so they can't do anything. Um, I can reform them though. So my choice is do I face the Martyrs or do I face the uh, Order of Forsaken Regiment? Um, and I was kind of in two minds. I decided to face the Order of Forsaken Regiment because I don't want those flanking me. Um, I do plan on shooting them in the uh, obviously with the War Trombone that's behind them but I, I don't know if I can do enough woods to guarantee kill them so I was kind of like do I get flanked by the Horde of Mars or flanked by the Forsaken so I just chose that way and I pivoted them that way. And here's the charges on the right hand flank. The Morbius pack have gone to the front of the uh, Brotherhood Knights and the Giant has gone back into the uh, Reckoner's Cavalry. And in shooting, the War Trombone moves up, it uh, unloads on the Regiment of Forsaken, uh, they were on three wounds, it does an extra four wounds, and puts them on seven, and it routes them. They were out of uh, inspiring range, and yeah, they're routed, they're gone. In terms of uh, combat on the right hand flank though, the Morbius pack, after failing to get Bane chanted by the wizard, which is very annoying, only put four wounds on the, uh, on the cavalry. Um, I wasn't expecting much there, you know, that's fairly decent. Um, but the giant does a bit better, he puts, uh, I think, another three wounds on the uh, on the Reckonite Knights, which is pretty poor actually, but he does get plus one for Brutal, which is enough to, uh, to rout them. And then on to combat in the middle, the uh, Troop of Martyrs, they, uh, they take four wounds from the Orc Crudger on the board on the flank, and then another five wounds from the Sharp Six in the front, and then 14, yeah, they are routed. And the Fleabag Riders do really well too, after getting a cheeky Bane chant by the uh, wizard, the flag gets, sorry, with loot, they put nine wounds on the Brotherhood, and they were already on four, that puts them on 13 wounds, and yeah, they are routed. So here's just an overview of the board at the end of Goblin Turn 3. Uh, as you can see, the Giant, um, after uh, routing the uh, Reckoniters, has reformed to face a potential charge from the Cavalry and the Forsaken Beast. And here's what the middle of the board is looking like. And yeah, wow, what a turn for the Goblins there. Um, pretty much the entire left flank has collapsed through the centre and got multiple flank charges off and... Uh, just doing wounds for fun. A lot of casualty there, there for the uh, <clears throat> for the Brotherhood, and 
now things are starting to look very good for the goblins. If you look how many units I've got coming towards the centre and all the Brotherhood have got there is um, a heavily wounded and surrounded horde of martyrs. Oh, I did forget to say, by the way, that the giant having double attacks into the uh, horde of martyrs, unfortunately I rolled a 1 for his attacks, which means I got d6 plus 1, which is only 7, doubled as 14, which is unfortunate. I would have liked more attacks there, but... Um, Despite having 14 attacks, he did 7 wounds. So those martyrs are sitting on 7 wounds at the moment. Let's see how the Brotherhood can respond going into Brotherhood turn 4. So, the Brotherhood Knights go in, counter charge back into the front of the Morbis pack. The Forsaken Beast goes into the front of the Giant. And the uh, Exemplar Hunter goes into the back of the Giant. The uh, Horde of Martyrs um, get Bane chanted again by loot and go into the flank of the trolls. And the Exemplar Forsaker flies out of the woods on the left hand side, up and over, and rear charges the giant. Uh, I was quite surprised at this one. If you have a look at this, this is his charge options. He could have rear charged the, uh, the Goblin Horde. Um, I think. I think, I, if I remember rightly, he was also in range of the flea bags. I can't remember if he was or not, but I, I didn't expect him to charge the giant. <laughs> so that's a strange one. And this is what he manages to do. 21 attacks in the rear and wounding on twos as well. He puts 11 wounds on the giant, plus the one he was already sitting on. But you know what? That little goblin in front of him waving his inspiring banner... The giant stands strong. He's not even wavered, so his efforts were kind of in vain here. But the Martyr Horde do a lot better. They put another 8 wounds onto the trolls, putting them up to 13. And despite the flag its best efforts, they're waving his flag to try and inspire. Nope, the trolls are routed. And the uh, Forsaken Beast and the uh, Exemplar Hunter between them put 6 wounds on the giant, which is a pretty decent effort. But it's not enough to waver him, he's still standing strong. And the Brotherhood Knights, although they've lost Thunderous because they're disordered, they're still hitting on threes and wounding on threes on the Morbius pack. And are still they do seven wounds. And they do rout them. But there's the wizard with his inspiring talisman. And on the re-roll, they're only wavered. So I'm very surprised that Morbius pack held up. Uh, inspiring coming up big time for the goblins in that turn. And after routing the trolls, the uh, Horde of Martyrs reformed to face the uh, oncoming onslaught from the uh, goblins, and that is what the centre of the board is looking like at the end of Brotherhood turn. So, goblin turn, and here we are after charging. Um, the giant has gone into the front of the Martyrs, along with the Orc Crudger. The uh, flea bag riders were supposed to go into the front of the uh, martyrs, but they failed their yellow belly roll, which was very annoying. Uh, the sharp sticks, though, have gone into the back of the uh, exemplar. Um, and that's a horde with 30 attacks in a rear. That's 90 attacks. I'm chuffed about this. I've always wanted to have a rear charge with a horde, and I've never happened, so I'm going to relish rolling every one of those 90 dice to attack. <laughs> So the giant and the orc crudger between them managed to put, uh, I think the I think they're on seven wounds. So they put another seven wounds on the uh, martyr horde, but it's not enough to break them. And uh, you can see there the um, exemplar adjutant uh, has three wounds on him. That's because the war trombone uh, breath attacked him during the shooting phase, but three wounds wasn't enough to uh, to break him. And the sharp sticks, 90 attacks, hitting on fives, wounding on fives, put another 13 wounds on the Exemplar Forsaker. That puts him up to 18, and even though he's inspiring, it's not enough, he is routed. So the sharp sticks coming up big this game. And the giant on the right hand side elected to counter charge the Exemplar Hunter. Um, puts a couple of wounds on him, he was already sitting on a few, but he puts him up to 8, and he gets plus 1 for Brutal, and it's enough to rout him. So he's gone too. So here's what the board's looking like at the end of the Goblin turn. As you can see, the Morbies pack on the right-hand side there, they were wavered, so couldn't do anything, unfortunately. The Giant has uh, regrouped after the combat to face the uh, potential charge of the Forsaken Beast. And uh, let's see what the, uh, what the Brotherhood can do in the next turn.
So the Brotherhood Knights, they get their Thunderous back because they weren't touched last turn, so they got back into the front of the Morbius pack, and yeah, no surprises there, they do about 10 wounds and they rout them. The Forsaken Beast goes into the front of the Giant and does another 3 wounds on him, putting up to 11, but he just shakes it off, he's totally fine. The uh, Martyr Horde though, not only do they regenerate 3 of their wounds when they counter charge the Giant, but after getting a cheeky little Bane Chant from the Adjudant, they put 6 wounds on him, and that puts him up to 18 wounds, and he is routed. And this is what the Martyrs reform like to, uh, to end the Brotherhood Turn 5. So Goblin turn 5 and everything is pretty much just mashed into the front of the Martyr Horde. There's even a Bane Chant gone onto the Sharp Sticks just for good measure. But the Gore Riders though on the top of the screen, they've actually charged into the uh, Exemplar Adjudant. And this is what we're left at at the end of the combat in the Goblin turn. Um, as you can see, Goblin's just holding m the centre with multiple units there. A Horde and two regiments of cavalry. And um, the Brotherhood Cavalry, as you can see, I parked my Wiz literally like right in front of them. So they've got no chance of making it across the board in the next turn. And the, uh, the Forsaken Beast is just tied down in like a wet noodle match with a giant. That's not going anywhere. So at this point, the Brotherhood concede. And it's a solid win for the Goblins. So there we are guys, uh, good win for the Goblins, and that game was a bit of a funny one, i got to be honest. When I saw that Brotherhood list, first of all, I was a bit worried. Lots of flyers, and I even knew that Horde of uh, Forsaken was going to be an issue. And even after deployment, I wasn't really comfortable, I didn't think I deployed that well. And then, again, at like turn 2, I just... Yeah, I was worried. I just didn't think I could win the game. And then, w weirdly enough, just as the game panned out, like, you know, three turns later, the Goblins are smashing up with the Brotherhood. And it was, a, it was a strange one. You know, I talked to my opponent at the, after the game. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. And he, he said he felt the same way. He said, I thought I deployed well. I thought the game was going well at turn one and two. And then all of a sudden, his army just crumbled. So what I'm going to do is do it a bit of, like, a, a tactical... Uh, overview of of the game and see where the Brotherhood went wrong. Uh, not to be a dick about it, obviously, and, and say my opponent made this mistake and that mistake. Um, but you know, like I said, he's like I said, he's a good friend of mine, and I know him to be a good general. It's just here's where I think it went wrong for the Brotherhood. First off, though, my MVP award goes to the Horde of Sharp Sticks. Yeah, these guys showed up. Fair play to them. They were involved in three combats. They uh, routed a troop of martyrs. They then had a rear charge on the Exemplar Forsaker with 90 attacks. And then they went into the front of the martyrs and routed them as well. Uh, and they did all that without taking a single wound. Not bad for 155 points. Fair play, boys. So this is my two cents on where I think Brotherhood went wrong. And this is an overview of the board taken just after Brotherhood had made their first movement. Before... Goblins have yet to even do anything. So, if I just draw a line down here and call this the Brotherhood right flank. That's a R for right. Check out my painting skills. Um, okay, so first things first, this unit of Brotherhood has moved up, right? And that's his first tactical error. Now, they can move up as fine, but he's moved them up too far because this unit of... Um, Fleabag Riders was able to move up and then pivot to face this way and get out of their line of sight. So that is a massive tactical error first and foremost. But that's okay because that, you know, that's just, he could have forgotten they had Nimble, right? Which most people do. Um, but what further compounds that mistake really is the fact that in turn two, instead of this guy, the example on the Griffin, he should have been somewhere uh, like here, ready to make, ready to support this unit there. But he isn't. He's actually there. And in turn two, he makes a massive tactical error here and flies him into the woods, chasing down a single 65 point war trombone. Now, he does route the war trombone, yes, and then goes further down behind the goblin lines. Now, he's unlucky enough to get wavered in the following turn. 
and by the time he comes back and you know it's too late in the game so this guy literally achieved nothing but but route a 65 point war trombone and he left these absolutely hanging out to dry um so yeah the flea bag riders came in smashed them the gall riders came in smashed them this guy came in and smashed them and if you think about it i had three cavalry units on the left flank and they ended the game without taking a single wound which is like you know something's gone wrong there somewhere isn't it um if i just get rid of all this what maybe could have happened is recognizing that his right flank is massively underdeployed and needs help maybe this unit of flyers can come over here and fill that gap there uh maybe not suicide this guy into there you know there's definitely potential like ways that is the benefit or after all of fielding flying units like this and flying units like that is that you've got such massive mobility you can plug gaps in your line by getting over and using that range if you know you've deployed poorly that's one thing i couldn't do but that's one thing he definitely could do so yeah i think a big mistake was failure to see this potential threat of this flank collapsing and not having anything to deal with it and not sending the flyers to these flyers to go help that was a big issue um and then another issue was sending these flyers into that war trombone which is like again he's 65 points so maybe that flyer could have helped out that flank instead because this was really tied up this flank and it should and it shouldn't have been these are two 95 point units and a giant and you've got like two units of cavalry then a monstrous creature in the middle that flank should have won and then come over really um so yeah weird target selection by this uh forsaken unit of flyers here and also don't forget there was a uh another flyer here which yeah good idea to fly him up and hide him on the first turn um but then okay yeah he was unlucky to get wavered on turn two fair enough but then weirdly f charging him into the giant that's like what a giant is like a massive tarpet and you individuals don't get double attacks from flanks so you know charging uh, an individual flyer into a giant is like just really bad target selection um yeah so but really bad target selection from that flyer that flyer and that flyer um they did okay actually it was a little bit um reckless to go smashing into that troll horde but in fairness they were unlucky enough to get routed on the counter charge because that was just very good rolling from the trolls um so that was unlucky but this one this one and this one was uh was you know not really ideal target selection there and i think that's what cost the brotherhood so there you are guys hope you enjoyed that game and i'll catch you on the next one